All right, so I got this uh, Airblade Eclair. Um, it's an awesome frame. I like when I saw it online, I was like, uh, it's all right, you know. Um, the main reason I wanted it was just because uh, it's one of the rare few frames that spins a two and a half inch prop with 11 XX motors and also holds a micro swift or a micro arrow camera so i got it you know i figured why not i mean they're the only other option that i know of um well there's the tomo quads it's not even out yet the sonic 2.5 but that's not even out yet and uh i don't i don't even know of any other ones uh oh wait i think there might be a Flex RC one. No, actually there's not. And I know there's another Airblade one. I think the Bolt. The Bolt is 2.5 inch. And uh, it does have a printed uh, TPU mount on top that fits a CCD now. But yeah, there's just no choices for 2.5 inch. And I don't understand it because 2.5 inch with 11XX is just like the best, man. It's just so awesome. It just it, it has so much power and it it's so maneuverable and it can fly anywhere you know uh this the tomo quad cs 110 was my favorite for a long time but once i got a taste of the micro ccd i couldn't go back to uh a to all-in-one cameras i just can't go back to it just can't do it so i uh, picked up this airblade eclair v2 i know uh, airblade has some other ones in the works the uh eclair v3 i guess i don't know it's a He's got a three inch coming out, one for 11XX and also one for 1306, 1407. So probably gonna try one of those out too. Cause uh, just like before the Tomo Quads Predator, which is a three inch for 11XX motors was one of my favorites too. Um, just because these props, these ones are cut down right now, but these are my favorite micro props ever for a two and a half inch to three inch and they come in three as a three inch but i cut them down to two and a half and they've just been so awesome for me um i can show you a full size one everybody always asks like uh as soon as they see these props even though i've said it like over and over and over again i tell everybody just a thousand times people still to this day are like what props are those they are the dys xt 3045s and there's only two places that i know of there's probably more but two places that i get from is rccrazed.com and readymaderc.com readymaderc is where i usually get them from they're cheap they're like a dollar 19 for a, a pair so you know 238 for a set of four so i guess they're not too cheap but they're worth it because they're freaking awesome um so if you saw my last video you know that my stack consisted of the omnibus f3 v2 the csata 12 amp 4-in-1 vtx03 and the aero micro v2 um my girlfriend took my damn lighter so i always use a lighter to shrink up heat shrink it's just what I use. A lot of people would like to use heat guns. I don't have a heat gun. I probably never will have one. A lighter works perfect. So, But now I have to use my iron to shrink this shit down. Makes it look kind of shitty, but don't want it falling off. I just got done finished building this. So the story is I got four of these Emacs 1106 6000 kV motors. I only got four because that's all you should have to buy and one of them didn't work it just did not work um, I was talking to my buddy Cliff about it and I mentioned that I'm probably gonna I'm, I'm hoping that they let me send me a new one or you know I knew they were gonna want me to send in the broken one so mode. I told him I was like man I really hope that they don't say something like are you sure the screw wasn't too long because like that's the <laughs> I would never do that. That's the first thing that I would never do wrong on a micro quad is 
use too long of screws for the motors. I mean, that that's a rookie mistake, you know. You make that mistake once and only once. So, uh, no, the screws weren't too long. I used the screws actually that came with the motors, which I normally don't do. But um, combined with the two and a half inch or millimeter uh, frame and then the uh, soft mounts, you can see I got these little soft mounts in there. That's like another millimeter or more, millimeter and a half maybe. Um, the screws barely go past, they don't even go past the red bottom part. So no, the screws were not too long. It was just a dead motor straight out of the package. So my buddy Cliff sent me a couple spares so that I could get this thing flying while I'm waiting for the broken one to be replaced. Um, so I just got the replacement motor in the mail a little bit ago, so I thought I would do a video of me finishing this up. And that doesn't even look right. I, I'm not gonna put this antenna up there, just one. It looks ridiculous. I think maybe I'll take it down here and make it come out the front right here. So it's opposite from this back one. So it's facing this way and this one's facing this way. That'll work. But anyway, um, as soon as I put this motor on, so what happened was, you know, I put on those four motors and then it was motor two that wouldn't spin. It would go like this, kind of. And then all of a sudden you hear doo doo doo, like the ESC resets, because that's what happens if the motor isn't spinning properly. The ESC will just reset. So I was like, oh great, what is it? You know, did I not solder it good or was the screw too long? But of course I already knew the screw wasn't too long because I checked that before I even ever power up the first time, you know? So tried to resolder, didn't help, still did it. So I took motor one, put it in motor two's spot and it spun up like it's supposed to. So I automatically knew that it was just a bad motor. I even went as far as to uh, take the bad motor and put it on motor one spot and it still did it so yep bad motor straight out of the package so beware of that um i really didn't think that that would happen with these motors because these motors look so nice they're really nice good quality and they come with all these extra screws and stickers and shit so i don't know you might want to buy five when you when you go to buy these motors just in case that's just my opinion though so as soon as I put this replacement on that Cliff sent me it spun right up spins just like it's supposed to see they're all good so I'm going to do my first flight of this quad here in a little bit. Uh, I just need to charge up a couple batteries uh, and throw the props on. So I'll be back with uh, probably a line of sight punch out and then some DVR footage. Oh. Wait, I was gonna say something else too. Cliff also uh, printed me out these pieces. There's the back, the backpack that's supposed to go. I think it goes like this. I don't know if I like that though. I don't. I don't really like having the buzzer out front there on top of the camera. And then the VTX is supposed to go in here, and then the antenna come out here. I guess. I don't know what those little tiny holes are for on each side. Um, maybe I might chop off this buzzer part. Wait, where's, oh, it's supposed to go this way, I think. Ah, I had it wrong. Yeah, it goes this way. Okay. With the buzzer out the bottom and the back, but I have the LED there. So yeah, yeah for that to work. Actually, it would still fit. Yeah, I could still fit that. So if I, I just need to chop the buzzer part off. And then I put the VTX right there, the antenna at the top. I might put those on. And then with the feet. It's kind of 
a lot of weight though. I gotta first. I'm gonna see how it flies, and then uh, if it has tons of power, then I will uh, add on this stuff because I really like having feet. It really protects the arms from getting all dinged up and broken and shit. Kind of a weird color of green though. But anyway, yeah, so I'll be back with more on the Eclair V2. Alright, so got everything ready to go. Uh, I did hover it, and when I hovered it, I was like, holy shit, this thing has some freaking power. Like, crazy power. So, this is going to be my first time doing a punch out. Haven't done it yet on this, but uh, you're about to do it with me. Try to get a good angle with this camera. Alright, here we go. Now this is with the Tattoo 450 milliamp hour 3S. Hovering at 23% throttle. Listen to how quiet and smooth it is. That wasn't full throttle. That was like three quarter throttle punch. All right, here we go. Full throttle, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, this thing's a beast. Oh, it does flip so nice. Oh my god. god it's just so smooth and so perfect now the big test is are the motors hot oh dude they're barely even warm they're not hot that is awesome oh man i am very happy with this build the camera looks excellent. Um, I will definitely have some DVR footage to follow. But so far, I am very impressed with this. I was just editing uh, this video and I, I was watching it and I was like, oh my god. Forgive me for my shitty uh, camera angles. I this I've never used this camera before. It's a GoPro session. And I'm not used to the angles or the width of the video or anything like that, you know, or even the sound quality. So I'm still trying to get used to it. It's probably going to take me a few videos to, you know, start making decent videos <laughs> instead of having them up here like this where you can't even barely see what I'm talking about. So sorry about that. But I'm still going to post a video because I'm sure somebody out there will get something out of it so uh, and the punch out video was pretty decent so I mean this thing afterthoughts on this is oh my god it's awesome uh, like I said before the CS 110 was my favorite because it was so small and had so much power but this is right up there or even tops it because only because I'm using the 1106s and these these 
motors are monsters. I mean, you heard it in the video. They scream when you punch it. But then if you're just hovering, it's like silent. It's crazy. It's the sleeper, sleeper motors. So um, I one thing I forgot I was going to do too was I was going to weigh it for you guys. Um, I haven't even weighed it myself yet. Besides, the other day I weighed it and it was like 82 grams. And I remember watching Albert Kim's video where he weighed his and it was like 89 grams. And he said that his was like a tank. And mine flies like a rocket, so I don't know if he's using different stuff on his and his just doesn't have as much power or maybe the 7 gram difference is that much of a difference. I don't know, but mine is a rocket. So let's weigh it without a battery real quick. Ninety-three. Whoa, that's crazy. What else did I add to? I added some zip ties. Oh, and that LED. And the wire. No, the wire was already there. So I added the LED. Um, six, seven zip ties. Oh, and the props. That's why it was so low. Okay. So I guess mine wasn't lighter. I kept thinking mine was way lighter than his, but I, <laughs> apparently it's heavier. Oh well, I don't even care. The motors don't get hot and it's a rocket, so that's all I care about. Uh, so 94 plus the 453 cell, 138. No, that's not bad. I think my uh, CSX weighs something like that. <laughs> and it has 1306s, but. Okay, so that was 138. Or no, it was it was 94 without the battery. So let's see. Oh, okay, I was off. 140 without the battery. This thing is a freaking rocket too. But this thing definitely is more beasty than this. But not by much. Seriously, I mean, if you want a small quad that's a rocket, uh, I would say go for this one over this one. But I'm telling you, this thing. I mean, I think everybody should own one of these because it's just so amazing. It's partly because the frame is so light that it makes you have a really light build. I mean, you're not going to see too many 3-inch builds that are 140 grams. So, anyway, I, I run that one on 4S too, but and this is 3S, and it's, you know, it performs pretty close. So my thoughts are I would definitely recommend this frame. Um, the only thing that I don't like is, and this is just my opinion, but it's the carbon. Here, let me get the CSX back out and try to show you the differences in the carbon. So you can see the CSX carbon, it reminds me a lot of like multi-rotor mania frames and uh, Armitan frames. Um, it would be nice if Airblade used that type of carbon. I don't know why. I, I really, I like it a lot more for some reason. I don't know why. Partly it's the looks. I don't know if this isn't any stronger than that or what, but it's definitely a completely different carbon. But that's just my opinion. I mean, that's just what I like, you know. I'm sure it's not bad carbon, and I'm going to crash the hell out of it and find out how easy it breaks. And it is only 2.5 millimeters thick. Um, the CS110 was 3 millimeters thick. I never broke one of those, but I do have one on my wall that had a broken arm. This is the version 1. I coated it, but after I, I glued the arm back together, and it's as tough as it would be normally it was this front left motor or arm and you wouldn't be able to break it just by bending it it would bend over all the way before it broke but anyway enough rambling uh my next video will be dvr footage of this bad boy right here